Back here on countdown to kick off at the Hilliard Howard Field, the Hambly Athletic Complex, as U Pike brings in KCU in this AAC matchup. U Pike three and three on the season. Corey Phipps in his third year at the head coaching position, at even 13 and 13 mark. Last uh, coming over from KCU, which he led them to a a great run there back in the COVID year when we played football in the spring and then departed from there to come to U Pike, and he's been here since. But he's uh, really done a good job of this program. They've had their bumps along the road. But uh, tonight, really getting healthy late in the season, and that's what they need because uh, a good opportunity here for the Knights to play through the last four games of the season starting tonight, and all four of those are winnable games. Bluefield on the road next week. They'll be back here for point on the 28th. That'll be senior day. And then closing things out at St. Andrews on November the 4th. Lee Kirkland last week down in Reinhardt, 19 of 34, 243 yards, two touchdowns. Knights, or the uh, Bears, excuse me, had a chance late. They uh, decided to kick the extra point after the touchdown. They, they had the second possession there in the first overtime rather than going for two in the win. Then on the first play from... The second overtime, Reinhardt puts it in the end zone. Their two-point conversion fails, so the Bears need a touchdown and a two-point conversion, and they're out of there with a victory. They come up short on fourth down, and they fall on the road to the 24th-ranked Reinhardt Eagles. But uh, here tonight, eyes solely focused on their opponent of KCU and uh, talking with Coach Phipps uh, before the game. He said one thing that this is uh, kind of through the week. He said, you know, sometimes it's about trying to get yourself right, and other times it's just the team that comes in, it just happens to be in the backside of a bad place to be because there's got to be somebody that's got to take out that frustration on them. That's kind of where we are here this evening as U Pike rolls in the KC Unites out of Grayson. Alexander's in the backfield last week, 23 carries, 129 yards. And last year he caught 11 passes for 84 in the win over KCU. It was an air raid attack from the word go. Kirkland threw for 390, four touchdowns and an interception. He uh, slung it all over the field. Of those 390, 98 of those went to Diego Soto. He caught nine balls for 149 yards. He made his return last week with two catches for 25. Upike has won the toss. They're going to receive the football to start things off, and we're about to get ready to get things rocking and rolling here tonight on a very cool evening and clouds rolling in over the area. We've had a mixture of some, it's not really heavy rain, more of a band of showers uh, that we've seen throughout the evening. We're going to see that off and on throughout the game here tonight, but uh, we will uh, certainly see how things play out as we get this one ready to roll as the Bears take the field. Decked out in the orange tops and bottoms of the black lids tonight. KCU in the whites, red sleeves, black helmets. Homecoming for the Bears this week as well. And uh, a very nice crowd has settled in at, at about 30 minutes ago. Really not at that point, but uh, has kind of uh, settled in nicely. And we'll see how things play out here tonight if the Bears can light up the scoreboard. They scored their most ever points against school history against this KCU team back in 2017. That was in a 70 to 28 victory. And Lee Kirkland, he's had this team's number several times uh, in the meetings. So we'll see how they uh, play it out here as the fireworks booming over top. And again, that cloud cover holding the, the smoke and from the, or I guess it's a fog, I should say, from the tunnel that is now working across as the smoke starting to drift away. The good thing is, is that the uh, smoke is blowing away from the field and uh, not hanging over top of it. So the Bears have won the toss. They want the football, so they'll start things off to get things rolling. 58 degrees to 9 under cloudy skies, bands of showers that will be rolling through. Winds westerly 10 to 20 tonight with gust of 25. What's up, Coach Grizzle? So Connor Ignacio, kicker for the KCU Knights, will set it up at the 35-yard line right in between the hash marks. 
Back to return for the Bears. Yukari Baker will be far side. Near side will be Braylon Barton. Barton, two catches for 12 yards last week. Derek Griffith having a standout season this year. Had uh, 202 yards in that game in which KCU hammered, or excuse me, Bupike hammered Union 52 to 10. School record in receptions, and the problem with that was is Lee Kirkland on the other side of that broke the school record for most passing yards in a game and received National Player of the Week honors. So we are ready for football. The Knights will kick it right to left as I view it here high atop the press box. Ignacio makes his approach. A little squib kick heading toward the far sideline. It'll check up and go out of bounds. And that's where Upike will take over from the 35-yard line on the kick out of bounds. So first and 10 for the Bears to start things off here on homecoming 2023. So actually they're going to put it up where the ball tra traveled out of bounds now. So they've moved it up to the 37. So that's where Upike will start things off. Lee Kirkland, Alex Sanders in the backfield. Kirkland, 6'6", 255 pounds, senior out of Bluffton, South Carolina. Claps his hands, wants to throw it on first down. Swings it out near his sideline. Sanders makes a shifty move, 40. Check that. That's actually Tyrese Christian, my mistake. And Christensen. Takes a tough bump right in front of the case, or right in front of his uh, bench. And the athletic trainer is immediately coming out to him. Injury timeout. We're back after this on the UPike Sports Network. here at the Hambley Athletic Complex. 11 seconds of this ball game and not the way that you want to start the contest here for UPike as the certified athletic trainers tending to Tyrese Christian, the junior out of Chicago, Illinois, after taking a big pop right in front of the Knights bench just shy of the 50-yard line. Kirkland's first pass on a swing route out to Christians, and he made a cut back at the 45 and then took a low blow there around the knee area. And he hops up. Good to see that, moving those legs around. So Jeff and Lauren Curley, the head athletic trainers here in Pikeville, and Christensen will head off to the sideline for further evaluation, but certainly good to see him hop up and stretch those legs out. Hope to see him back in the ball game in just a bit. So the Pikeville first down moves the ball out to the 47. It was a gain of 10. Adrian Medeco in the backfield now with Kirkland on first and 10. Swing route, brings it out here near side to Derek Griffith. Griffith slams on the brakes at the 50-yard line, slides across midfield, and gets down to the 49 of the Knights. Ball on the near side hash mark. Bears want to go quick. Three by one set. 
Another swing route out to Griffith. Makes the grab at the 49. Pushes forward just shy of the 45. It's going to be third down. Xavier Sparrow in there on the stop. So third down and four coming up. Kirkland takes, gives. That's off to Medeco and a nice push off right tackle to move the sticks. Second first down of the ball game as he gets across the 45 down to the 43. Medeco, the senior out of Cape Coral, Florida, the pride of Cape Coral High School. Amari Hardwick and Braylon Barton, far side. Near side is Griffith. First down and 10. Per Kirkland pumps, floating, floating it toward the far sideline, looking for Hardwick. It falls incomplete. Brings up second down. Hardwick, a transfer out of KCU. Several players transferring once. Coach Corey Phipps made the trip from Grayson down to Pikeville three years ago. Second down and 10, 13 12 to play on a rested clock. Twin set for Kirkland. Medeco in the left pocket now. Kirkland fires this one down the far sideline, has his man Hardwick there streaking down that far sideline and can't make the connection. Pass falls incomplete, brings up third down and 10. Clock stopped 13 07 to go here in the opening frame. Ben Henson and Yukari Baker. Also, Diego Soto coming in now. Baker will be near side on the boundary right. Kirkland on third down and 10. Blitz coming off the edge. Kirkland stands in the pocket, fires it across. Had his man there of Henson, and he fires it through the fingertips, and it falls incomplete. In coverage, Dante Prowl. So fourth down coming up for the Knights, or for the Bears, excuse me. Offense staying on the field. Eight of 24 on fourth down conversion attempts this year, 33%. Kirkland's got a free pass play here. He'll throw it to the far sideline and cannot make the hookup with Braylon Barton, but the neutral zone infraction is going to get a free five and make it fourth and five. So they got it on Kosi Okakor for Okafor, excuse me. So move it up to the 38-yard line. The Bears again trying to convert here on fourth down. Pressure coming off the edge, fires it into the near side flat. Soto makes a grab, cuts back in at the 25, gets down inside the 20, the 15. Move the sticks. Another Bears first down. Diego Soto, junior wide receiver out of Orange Park, Florida, made the transfer when Coach Phipps came over from Grayson to Pikeville. First down and 10. They line it up, go quickly. Hand off to Medeco. He'll spin off the right side and get down inside the 10 before getting stood up there. Wyatt Brackman off that defensive interior making the stop. Going to put him right at the 10-yard line. So give him a gain of three, make it second and seven. Three by one set, wide left for Kirkland. Inside of 12 to play here in the opening series. Kirkland looking left, throwing left. That ball's toward the back corner of the end zone looking for Braylon Barton, but they can't make the hookup. It'll be third down and seven on the incomplete pass. DeAndre Stafford checking into the ball game. He'll start on the far sideline. Diego Soto in the slot. Now two back set with Barton as they'll roll him out of the backfield. 
Little bubble screen set up near sideline, trying to get it to Medeco, but he was walled up by his own lineman and couldn't get to the ball. Fourth down. He was well protected, but just too protected. So brings up fourth down and seven now. This will be the second fourth down conversion attempt by the Bears on this drive. Offense stays on the field from the 10-yard line of the Knights. Kirkland gets the jump. He'll fire it near side, and he's got his man in the end zone for six. Touchdown, Bears. Throws it into the hands of Yukari Baker, and Baker holds it in for the 10-yard score, and the Bears strike first at 6 nothing with 11.41 to go here in the opening period. Kirkland tosses touchdown number 12 of the season, and he threw a rocket right into the midst of Yukari Baker, who holds it in on the near sideline, and a nice catch there for the freshman out of Thomasville, Georgia. Correction, freshman out of Louisville, Kentucky. Had my sheet up too high. Extra point is true, 7-0 our score. Back after this on the U-Pike Sports Network. Twelve plays, 63 yards, 3 minutes, 19 seconds. Yukari Baker makes his first collegiate grab, and it's a touchdown. And the Knights are trailing the Bears here 7-0 on this homecoming night here in Pikeville. James Carr, happy to have you along with us here on a cool night. Very windy. So Austin Shuffler, another transfer from KCU, makes his approach, booms this one deep. He'll be fielded at the seven. Across the 15, 20 balls on the turf. Backpedaling and picking it up for the Knights. So recovering the football was Javante Anderson. So first down and 10 at the 11. And here comes the Knights onto the field, 0-6 on the season. Jason Aubrey, the head coach in his first season there. Graduate of Illinois State University back in 1998. Baden Gillespie will start things off as the quarterback. Two receivers each way. An offset tailback, Gillespie wanting to run, brings it out to the near sideline across the 15 and is pushed out of bounds. Gillespie did his high school ball up in Louisa from Lawrence County. But a good run for him on first down as he was a, an option-style quarterback there playing for Coach Allen Short for the Bulldogs. 7 of 17 on the season, 64 yards through the air. No touchdowns, two interceptions. He picks up eight on the first play from scrimmage for the Knights. Makes it second down two. Seven nothing Bears as we approach the 11 minute mark here in the opening period. Jamari Wilson takes the pitch off the near sideline. He'll get the first down as he crosses the 25 and then is pushed to the ground there. Brent Coleman. Also in on the stop was Chuck Moore. But a good start there for the Knights as they get it across the 25, give him the 27-yard line. Knights. 
Near side hash mark for the Knights. Averaging only eight first downs a ball game. 135 total yards of offense this season. And they have they have struggled mightily, to say the least. Gillespie on first down and 10. Gives it off to Wilson on a sweep. Tries to cut it back in on the seam. And gets stood up there by a wall of orange jerseys. Levi Evans, the last man off the pile, the redshirt freshman coming in there making the stop. Evans out of Kingsport, Tennessee, Dobbins Bennett High School. We'll give him a gain of two on the carry there by Jamari Wilson. He's got one of the two touchdowns on the season for this Knights team. 98 carries for 297 yards coming into the contest. Wilson will start in the left pocket of Gillespie. Two receivers to the near side. Gillespie trying to roll out, wants to throw it, slings it out to his man, and that ball's broken up and nearly intercepted. Timothy Butler got a hand on it. Karan Thrower was the man trying to backpedal and pick it up. The intended receiver was Davari Morris. Heck of a play on the ball there by Timothy Butler, the graduate out of Plantation, Florida. Third down and eight. 9.23 and arrested clock here in the opening period. Gillespie uncorked it, and Butler made a great play on the ball that was a, and looked like it was right at Morris and was going to go for a big gain there on second down. Gillespie goes with two backs in the backfield now. Gives it off to Morris. Morris with a head of steam right up the middle, and he gets tripped up before getting to the 30. They're going to give him the 30-yard line, a gain of one, and here comes the punting unit on Connor Ignacio. We'll take a swing of the leg on this one, kicking into the wind. That is, for the moment, kind of looks like it's kind of laid down somewhat. A little bit of motion on those flags on the uprights, but he'll kick it away to Braylon Barton as the Bears' defense stands tall. Good snap back to Ignacio. Nearly had that one blocked, but he sends it sky high. It checks up at the 39-yard line. It takes a Bears bounce back toward the 45. They'll have it at the 44-yard line. 8.41 to play here in the opening period. And Upike leading it 7-0. So a five-play drive results in only 18 yards for KCU. Here comes Lee Kirkland with Alex Sanders in the backfield. Three receivers right, one left. Kirkland on first and 10. Wants to throw. Stands high in the pocket, floats it out near his sideline. He's got Sanders there across midfield. Making the stop there. Jacob Wright. So gain of nine makes it second down and one. Sanders ahead of steam off the near sideline. Goes, gets down to the 40. And that'll move the sticks for another first down for Upike. Fifth first down of the ball game. Kirkland sets it down quickly, ready to go. Three receivers left, one right now with Sanders in his left pocket. Blitz coming. Hand off Sanders. Finds a seam, hits the B button at the 35, and it gets down to the 35 on a gain of five, second and five. Xavier Sparrow out of the secondary coming in there making the stop. Trips to the near side. Play clock's at 15. Handoff Sanders, knifing his way through, cuts back into the center of the field and gets down to the 25-yard line on a gain of 10. Sanders, 402 yards on the season, four touchdowns on the ground, two more through the air. After missing a couple of games early on the season, He's bounced back nicely. 
He just kind of gives Lee Kirkland that safety net that he feels so nice with back there. He'll give it back to Sanders again on a dive off the left side of the center. He'll pick up, give him two down to the 22, make it second down eight. Okafor making the stop. Two receivers and a tight end right. Blitz coming, picked up nicely. Kirkland all kinds of time. Right across the post route, he floats it into Derek Griffith, who hauls it in for the touchdown. 23-yard pitch and catch from Lee Kirkland to Derek Griffith. Kirkland's second passing touchdown of the night. Griffith's fourth of the season. 6-18 to play here in the opening period. 13-0 U-Pike. Jake Hadley out for the extra point attempt. 24 of 25 on PA attempts, PA tem, PAT attempts on the season. Joseph Sandorf with the hold. Snap is back. Ball is down. Kick is up. And drives it through the middle. 14-0 our score. Back after this on the UPike Sports Network. Six plays, 56 yards, two minutes, 23 seconds. And Lee Kirkland throws his second touchdown of the night, a 23-yarder to Derek Griffith. 14-0 is our score. Wilson back deep on the far side. Near side is Javante Anderson. End over end kick, backing Wilson up. He'll take it at the 11, lost the football. That one's still loose on the turf, and the Bears recover it on the far sideline. Running underneath it and getting there is Tierden Berry, the senior out of Ona, West Virginia, and Cabell Midland. So Jamari Wilson puts it on the, on the turf. The Bears will start with it inside the orange zone at the 19. Let's see if Lee Kirkland goes for a home run ball right here out of the gate. He'll go three receivers near side, two, three, four. That's Griffith, Barton, and Soto. Sanders starts in an offset pistol look. They'll swing it out to him on a pump. Now they'll float it to the back of the end zone. There's a wide open Diego Soto touchdown, U Pike. Soto, a 19-yard pitch and catch. Penalty marker flies at the end. That's going to be excessive celebration on Soto as he spun the football in the end zone. So that one took maybe six or seven seconds. Check in with our white hat here. Jacob Headley to attempt the point after. Result of the play is a touchdown. After the touchdown, unsportsmanlike number four in the offense. The extra point, the yardage will be assessed on the kickoff. Coach Phipps showing his displeasurement with the infraction, so the kickoff will be moved back 15 yards after the PAT try. Extra point flies through, 21-0, 6.08 to play here in the opening period. Back after this on the UPike Sports Network.
One play, 19 yards, 10 seconds. Um, I guess it was what it would take as... But uh, Lee Kirkland throws his third touchdown of the night. Diego Soto hauls in his third touchdown of the season. And it's 21 to nothing with 6.08 to play here in the opening period. So the kickoff gets driven back now to the 20 after the 15-yard penalty against Soto. So Austin Shuffler booms this one deep and a fair catch called for at the 16-yard line. So that's where KCU will set things up. So the fumble on the last kickoff attempt turns into points. And the Bears rolling here early on. Kirkland has thrown for 103 yards already, 8 of 13. So Wilson and Gillespie back in the backfield. Two receivers right, one left, a tight end right. Gillespie on first and 10, gives it off to Wilson, and he gets pinballed off to the right side, dives across the 30 before slipping, gets the 31-yard line on a gain of six. Inside of six to go here in the first period. Bears rolling early. Three touchdown passes from Lee Kirkland. And he's been throwing on air the last two series. Upike with eight first downs in the ball game. They'll face second down and four for the Knights on this snap to Gillespie. Little RPO action. He'll lower the shoulder and get out just shy of the 35 and give him the 34 yard line. So they're going to put him. Actually, they're going to push it to the 35, and they're going to call it third down and inches. Nope, now they're going to move the sticks and make it first down. Second first down of the ball game up for KCU. Other scores final this afternoon with teams in the Playing area that we've uh, covered this year. Reinhardt hammers St. Andrews at a 57 0. Handoff Wilson goes right up the gut, spins left, gets out to the 38 yard line on a gain of three, second and seven. Bethel, Tennessee defeats Roosevelt 44 7. Cumberland, Tennessee falls to Georgetown 42 14. Lindsey Wilson over Campbellsville 35 14. All these games final. Twenty-one nothing. Our score here. Union leading point, twenty to thirteen. That game with a minute thirty-three to go in the fourth, down in Barberville. Faulkner trailing Cumberland's fourteen to seven. That game midway through the second quarter. And movement on the right side. Who moved first is the question. And we're going to fall start on KCU. We'll okay, get that one on Javante Anderson, down. wide receiver. Kaiser leads Warner 24 0. And that'll wrap things up. Not a whole lot of late uh, games. One other one uh, Weber International is at Ava Maria. The Gyrenes. Washington comes back and beats Oregon in a battle of seven versus eight today. Out in Seattle, 36-33, Huskies win it. Handoff Wilson, knifing his way back across the 35. That'll put him right at the 35, so they'll pick up two. And make it third down and 10. Number 14, Louisville leading Pitt, 14-7. 
Arizona in front of number 19, Washington State, 7-6. LSU leading Auburn, 7-0. All three, all four of the top ranked teams today with Hardy wins. Georgia, Michigan, Ohio State, and Florida State. Third down and 10 for the Knights inside of three minutes to play here in the first period. Gillespie pulls it out of the gut of Wilson. And then as he grows across the 40-yard line, he runs right into the arms of Javon Shepard. Shepard making the stop. And it's going to be fourth down. Good read there by Gillespie. Again, that's the offense that he ran in his time up at Lawrence County. That little RPO action. So Austin Howard will come out and punt now. Six kicks for 30 and a half yards on an average for him this season. Barton stands back inside his own 30. High snap, and it's a fake. Howard trying to get the edge, and he's not going to get there. As snuffing it out and running him down on the near sidelines, Joe Temp, the graduate from Cottage Grove, Minnesota, the pride of Park High School. So the fake fails miserably. And it's going to be another short field for the Bears as they'll take over at the Knights' 30. Minute 52 to go here in the opening period. They lead it 21-0. Kirkland in a two-back set. Barton goes out in a motion. They'll give it off to Sanders. He'll dive forward across the 30 down to the 26 on a gain of four second down six. Okafor making the stop there. Sanders comes off. Madeco back in. Great Cato ball. As an offset wing back, the high snap to give to Medeco a huge hole right up the gut across the 25 of the head of seam down to the 22. Gain of four, third and two. Bears with eight first downs in the ball game. One of three on third downs, but they've converted on both fourth down tries tonight. Empty set now for Kirkland. Sanders in a slot near sideline with Griffith. Blitz coming off the edge. Kirkland slings it out into the flat. He's got his man there who makes the grab as he'll get it out to Ben Henson. And that'll move the sticks for the ninth first down of the ball game for this U-Pike team. Averaging nearly 22 a game, over 400 yards of total offense for the Bears. 285 through the air and 124 on the ground. Should be the final play of the first quarter coming up here as Kirkland starts in an empty set, brings Sanders back to his left pocket. Blitz coming again for the Bears. They'll give it off to Sanders. He pinballs off of a man, then cuts downfield and gets to the 16. A gain of one, and that's the end of one. 21-0. U-Pike leading KCU. Quarter number two on the other side here on the U-Pike Sports Network.
21 nothing as we welcome you back here to Hilliard Howard Field. Bears leading KCU. They'll flip ends, work it from right to left as I view it now as Kirkland wants to throw. And he loses the football, and that one's recovered by the Knights as reaching out and ripping it out of his hands. As Jacob Wright just ripped it out of his hands and then recovered it. So a turnover costly for you, Pike, as that thwarts away a good, another good drive after setting up a short field on the failed faked punt by KCU. So the recovery is at the Knights 28-yard line. So Gillespie comes out with Jamari Wilson. Two receivers and a tight end left, one right on the boundary. Gillespie rolling out left, wants to throw it, has his man there. He was going for Javante Anderson on the far side flat. He drops it incomplete, second and ten. Homecoming for the Bears tonight. Trying to get to four and three on the season. More importantly, another conference win in AAC play. And KCU's gonna have to burn a timeout as the play clock was down to zero. Again, looking at the series between these two, this is the 13th all-time meeting. UPIC leads the series 10-2. to two. They met last year in the season opener, 54-33. It was a shootout in which UPIC finally got its bearings and took and pushed it out of reach late. But the Knights have fallen in the past seven meetings with UPIC. And right now, in a sizable deficit early on. Last week on the road for the Bears, they fell 41-35 in double overtime. They trailed at 14-7 at the half, tied it up at 21 in the fourth quarter, took the lead with 114 to go in the ball game. Reinhardt answered and evened it at 28. Reinhardt had the ball first in the first overtime. They scored. Upike answered. Reinhardt scored in the second overtime, and the Bears failed on fourth down conversion attempt. Here's Wilson, a dive off the left tackle. He'll get out to the 30-yard line on a gain of two. Wilson, a 5'11", 180-pound running back out of Louisville, Kentucky, Moore High School. Had just under 300 yards on the season coming into this game. The Knights has been, as I've mentioned offensively, have been limited. 75 yards on the ground, 60 through the air. They'll face third down and nine from the 29 on this snap by Gillespie. Pressure coming off the edge, handoff Wilson. He jumps through the hole and then gets knocked off his foot by Poole at the 34-yard line. It's fourth down. Malone Pule, junior out of Elon, North Carolina, Modesto Junior College he transferred in from. Ignacio back out for the punt. Barton back inside his own 30. 21 nothing our score. Inside of 14 minutes to go before halftime. Ignacio, little rugby style move there to get away from the block attempt and the ball will check up in front of Pike's bench and then finally tumble out of bounds around the 30-yard line. Well, 
So right now, the Knights 0 for 3 on third down, 0 for 1 on fourth down on the failed attempt. Kirkland on first and 10. Claps gets a free play. Floats it near sideline, trying to play back to the ball was Amari Hardwick, but he can't get there. The hard clap there by Kirkland drew the man across. Defense, number 56. Look at that one on Okafor. Still first down. So push the ball out to the 35-yard line and make it first and five. Four hats across the line. They get a jump and no flag this time. Kirkland floating it near side and he just throws this one out of bounds. Looking for DeAndre Stafford. Well covered near side by Xavier Sparrow. Also there was Draper Aldridge. Makes it second down and five. Two receivers and a tight end as a wing right. Kirkland zips it out to Griffith. Griffith in the far side flat. Makes a nice move, tight roping the sideline in front of the Knights bench as he gets out near midfield to the 49-yard line, a gain of 14. Tenth first down of the ball game for the Bears as they start driving again, leading 21-0 here inside of 13 to play in the first half. Right above the Kentucky logo in between that Pikeville High School logo here at midfield. Kirkland on first and 10. The take, the fake, the give. Zips it into Derek Griffith's fingertips as he rifled that one high on the quick post. Out to the 31-yard line, another first down. Back-to-back -back passing first downs, number 11 in the ballgame. Kirkland filling it here tonight. Three touchdown passes already in this ball game. Same set for Kirkland on first and 10. Blitz coming, handoff Sanders, and as he tried to jump off his center's right hip of Eli Stollard, he gets knocked backward and loses one. Well, the near side official had him at the 32. The far side official and the man in the middle puts him at the 31, so officially no gain, second down 10. Kirkland, 11 of 17, 142 yards on the evening. Knight showing blitz off the edge. They'll swing it out to Sanders in the flat. A stiff arm, but a great open field tackle right in front of his bench. As Derek Houston makes the stop. Middle linebacker, 17 tackles, two interceptions on this team. So third down and 13. See if Kirkland tries to go downfield on this throw. Five hats across the line. Blitz coming off the edge. Kirkland steps up in the pocket. Rolling out left. Floats it out to Sanders. Sanders makes a nice catch. A little shimmy shake inside the 30. And then a late hit coming on the near sideline by Uriel Carrero. And we're going to get 15 added on the back side of this. And that's going to move the sticks. So Carrero with a big hit there. So we'll go half the distance to the goal from the spot of the foul. So it was at the 28. So we should take it down to the 14. And by golly, math works. Right at the 14-yard line, near side hash mark. First down and 10, Bears, as they go inside the orange zone. Leading 21-0, 11 minutes to play here in the opening half. Two receivers are tied in right, one left. That's Stafford. Kirkland looking right, fires up top. Stafford goes high and tries to pull it in and can't, or check that Griffith tried to haul it in, could not hold on. Trying to make the one-handed grab there on the quick post route. Second down, 10. 
Clock resting, 10.53 to play here in the first half. Kirkland's had a few balls here tonight that he's put on point. Other ones that have just sailed as he's turned loose of it. Hand off to Medeco. He'll get spun down after a gain of maybe one. They'll take him down to the 13. It'll be third down nine. Sanders back in. Medeco off. Also back in is Braylon Barton as Cradleball will step out. They'll go three receivers right. Griffith, Barton, Soto. Near side is Stafford. Kirkland pumps, throws to the end zone. He's got his man there. Touchdown. That's Braylon Barton, the senior out of Calhoun, Georgia, hauls it in for 6 27 to 10. Or 27 27 nothing, excuse me. 10 12 to go in the first half. Barton made a nice job there of adjusting on the play as he kind of had to spin to come back to the ball. 13-yard hookup there as he picks up his second touchdown of the season. High snap, they get it down, they kick it through, and the extra point is good by the Bears. 28-0 our score, 10-12 to go in the first half. Back after this on the U Pike Sports Network. Player down was Eli Sammons, the long snapper out of Greenup County High School. He makes his way to the sideline. In the break, though, we do have a penalty marker as Coach Corey Phipps really got uh, animated with the, the officials, and he was pleading his case of saying, of everybody on the field that cannot be touched, my long snapper, who was the one that was injured in the play, is that guy. He's still talking with the side judge coming down the near sideline. One of his assistants is trying to come down there and build a little barrier in between Coach Phipps and the side judge. So the touchdown drive for... The Bears, nine plays, 70 yards, three minutes, four seconds. Braylon Barton holds in the touchdown pass, number four for Lee Kirkland. But again, the Bears will kick off from their 20 after a second unsportsmanlike conduct penalty at the end of a touchdown. And I, again, it's, he's, he's taking up for his player because of all the people that are on the field, the the. The long snapper cannot be hit. That's the way the rules are to protect that guy who basically snaps the ball and has his head down the entire time. Kickoff is fielded near sideline, and ball comes out at the end. Was he already down by contact? We're waiting for an official signal. Bears think they have it. St 
still have not seen an official signal from any of the officials, and they're going to say he was down by contact. It was Samoe Azabuki, one of the tight ends for KCU. He put it on the turf right in front of the Bears bench, but I think they got the call correct. It looked like he had a knee down as the ball came out. So Azabuki puts it on the turf, but he was ruled down already before the contact sprung the ball free. So the Knights will have the football near sideline at the 44-yard line, down 28-0 with 10.08 to go here before halftime. Homecoming night here for the Bears. They'll recognize the homecoming court and crown this year's queen. The king of the night, though, has been Lee Kirkland. 14 of 21, 157 yards, four touchdowns. The score record is six in a game. Kirkland has already rewritten some of the biggest parts of the record books that some th people thought would never happen. We'll give it off to uh, Jamari Wilson on a dive out to the 45, a gain of a couple. Kirkland is in the record book with those six touchdowns in that game against Union in which he rewrote the completions, attempts, and yards thrown in a game. 6-14 that night, 38 of 58. He matched the previous mark set by Xavier Malone and Trevor Hoskins, who did it twice against Faulkner and Georgetown in the 2011 and 10 seasons, respectfully. Gillespie zips it out near a sideline. That's Braden Long who makes the catch. And he's going to be shy of the 50. In between the 48 and the 49 as his helmet pops loose. In there on the stop, Brett Coleman. Also in there for the Bears. Player who we do not have on the roster. Number 33. So make a third down and five. Ball just shy of midfield on the near side. Hash mark working it from left to right as we view it here. High atop the press box at Hambly. Knights 0 for 3 in the ball game on third down conversions. They've only converted 19% of the time on the season. Three hats across the line for the Bears. Blitz coming off the edge. Gillespie rolling out left. Cuts it back in. Finds a big crease, and he's got a huge hole near sideline. Right up the middle of the field he goes. Cuts back left. Comes back right, and he's going to be brought down inside the five near the goal line. And Baden Gillespie trying to pick up what would be only the third touchdown of the season through six games for this KCU team. Makes it first down and goal at the four. Forty-seven yards on the scamper there by the quarterback out of Lawrence County. So Gillespie will go empty. Two receivers each way to tight end left. The low snap. Gillespie trying to get the edge, and he's not going to get there as... Trayvon Barnett, the senior from Johns Creek, Georgia, tackles him down for a loss. That was a design play the entire way there of Gillespie trying to run, but it's no good. That was the longest play of the season by any member on KCU's team. 36 was the previous. That was a passing play from Malicious Kane, who was the starting quarterback coming into this game. So 47 there by Gillespie. So they lose three on the play, and we'll get a timeout here with 6.58 to go by the Knights. 28-0 our score. We're going to stay right here. Scores around college football. Finals earlier today through top 25 action. Number one, Georgia over Vanderbilt, 37-20. Number two, Michigan hammers Indiana, 52-7 up in the big house. Number three, Ohio State goes to Purdue and wins 41-7. Number four, Florida State over Syracuse, 41-3. Number 11, Alabama survives against Arkansas in Tuscaloosa, 24-21. The Tide knock off the Razorbacks. It was number 16, Utah beating Cal, 34-14.
Number six, Penn, knocks off UMass 63-0. Number seven, Washington, comes from behind and beats number eight, Oregon, at home 36-33 for the Huskies. Number 19, Tennessee, survives against Texas A&M 20-13. And it's Oklahoma State upsetting number 23-ranked Kansas 39-32. Game's currently underway. Number 14, Louisville, they've got a ball game with Pitt up at Pittsburgh, and it's a 14-13 game. Pittsburgh just putting one in on the ground, 123 to go before halftime. Arizona leads number 19, Washington State, 17-6. Number 22, LSU in front of Auburn, 17-0. Notre Dame, 21st in the nation, leading number 10, USC at home, 7-0. And number 25, Miami, number 12, North Carolina is scoreless. Kentucky leading Missouri, 7-0. Second down and, and goal from the seven. Handoff Wilson. He slams on the brakes, looks for a hole, and there's nothing there. Chuck Moore in on the stop. Hopefully for the Miami Hurricanes this week, there's no situations in which they have to take a knee. One of the most absurd plays and endings I've ever seen to a college foot any type of football game to say that. All you have to do is put a knee on it and take a victory and – for some reason, they called an offensive play. They fumble the football, give it back to Georgia Tech, and they go down and score the game winner and upset the, I think they were 13th at the time. They should have never left them in the top 25 after a just a bonehead play like that. Gillespie rolling out to the right, and he's not going to go anywhere but down. Jacquez Russ, the graduate from Tarmac, Florida. Travella High School pride right there as he'll pick up the sack his – that will give him a sack and a half on the season and make it fourth down and goal from the 15. So down 28 to nothing inside of six to go before halftime. The Knights, who have only converted 20% of the time on fourth down, they have not converted here this evening. They're 0 for 1. They're going to go for it. Gillespie throws behind his man and taking a big pop there was Davari Morris. Pass was incomplete. And it'll be first down and 10 Bears from their own 15. We'll see what Lee Kirkland wants to do here. Longest sustained uh, driving position of, for the Knights here, or the Bears, excuse me. Kirkland on first down and 10. Turns, gives it off to Sanders. He'll dive off the right side and get out to the 19, maybe the 18. Gain of three, make it second down and seven. So Casey use five possessions. Two punts, a fumble, and two turnover on downs. And the longest run or pass of the season by the Knights of 47 yards comes up empty after getting down to the four-yard line. So a couple of more for the Bears. Get it out to the 21-yard line. Make it third down and five. Kirkland claps the hands, wants to throw it, fires it out to Sanders. Sanders a shifty move and is shoved out of bounds on the far sideline. They take him out at the, looks like at the 23. They need the 25, so it'll be fourth down. Leading 28 to nothing. Offense is staying on the field. They're going to bring cradle ball in as a tight end near side. Knights loading the line, and we get movement and motion up front. And the question is, did Jacob Kopchak get drawn off? There was motion by the front line of KCU, and then Kopchak raised up. 
So you've got the argument there that he was drawn off. We'll check in with our white hat. They didn't see it that way. So now they will send in the kicking unit. Joseph Sandorf, the Jupiter out of Tarpon, Florida. 15 punts this year, averaging 42 and a half a game. His long of 59. See if he can hang a good one here as Javante Anderson stands back at his own 35 as Sandorf will kick in the direction of the wind that we have here this evening. He spirals one to the moon. Anderson calls a fair catch, fields it like a center fielder, fielding a ball in the outfield. He'll take it at the 42-yard line, 3.29 to go before halftime, and that's where the Knights will set things up, trailing 28-0. Stay tuned with us at the half. We'll have the homecoming procession and the crowning of this year's queen. We'll check scoring stats of this game, check other scores from around the area in top 25 and NAI action. They're on this homecoming 2023 for the Bears. First down and 10. Gillespie, play action, fakes the toss, and then gets taken to the ground off the far sideline. Ben Tate, graduate out of Spartansburg, South Carolina, making the stop. No gain on the play, second down 10. Tate, 23 tackles. Three and a half for a loss, two and a half sacks on the season. Brian of Barnes High School there in South Carolina. Play clock's inside of 10 as they walk to the line. Two receivers and a tight end right. Gillespie lets the play clock trickle all the way down to zero as he calls for it. Hand off Wilson. Stutter step off the left side, and there's nothing there. Ben Tate was there on the stop. Also on it, coming out of the pile was Jay Arnold, the sophomore from Douglasville, Georgia. Third down coming up. Take him out to the 44-yard line. Make it third down eight on the gain of two there by Wilson. Wilson, 11 carries for 34 yards on the evening. Play clock at five as KCU trying to shorten a game now. As they're milking off every possible second. They did not get that one away. Waited too long to, to snap the football, and they're going to back this one up five on third down and make it third and 13. Sixth penalty of the night for 40 yards against the visiting Knights. Back up, Back up. Averaging nearly seven a game for 67 yards through the season. So now take them inside the 40 to the 39. Inside of two on a rolling clock here in the second quarter. Bears leading the Knights 28 to nothing. So, Chris Elliott, the defensive coordinator, signaling in the call that he wants here on this play. Hand off Wilson, and that's going nowhere. He'll get back out to the 40. Ben Tate in on the stop. Also there was Levi Evans. So, Upike will burn a timeout with a minute 26 to go before halftime. Leading 28 to nothing. We'll see if they can put some more stuff together and continue to add to this lead. Hat tip to our crew here tonight. David Lee Chapman, our executive producer. Zach Beek and Cody Morton taking care of all the camera operations. Happy to have everyone here with us tonight on homecoming on the U-Pike Sports Network. 
Halftime coming up with the crowning of the 2023 homecoming queen. As Upike looks to get back above 500 this season, currently at three and three. So Yukari Baker will back up and will stand at his own 25 yard line. So Carter Ignacio trying to hang another one here and pin Upike deep. Nasio has to get that one away, and that one's blocked. Obi Wilson scoops it up to the 25 with reservation for six. Take it to the house. Touchdown, Bears. Penalty marker on the near sideline as the official ran into Eli Sammons as he was starting to make his trip onto the field for the extra point try. But the blocked punt goes returned for six as Obi Wilson scoops it up and goes to the house. So they'll put the, the penalty on the kickoff for the sideline interference. So a defensive touchdown for the Bears. They lead it 34 nothing. As Jake Headley lines it up, splits the uprights, 35-0, a minute 18 to play before halftime. Back after this on the U-Pike Sports Network. Well, the offense can't have all the fun here tonight on this one as the defense gets a blocked punt for a return touchdown as Obi Wilson scooped it up after Karan Thrower got the block. He runs it 30 yards back to the house, 35-0 with a minute 18 to play here before halftime. James Carr, happy to have you along with us here tonight on the UPIC Sports Network, homecoming night for the Bears. The sideline interference pushes the Bears back to their own 20 on the kickoff for the third consecutive time. They'll drive it back to the 19 where it's fielded for a return. That's Morris. Takes it up the far side hash marks, crosses the 40, the 45. So a good return there by Devari Morris. And the Knights will have the football with a minute 11 to play here before halftime. A chance to go at a two for one here. They get the football to start the second half as well as Upike won the coin toss and elected to receive. So, so far in the ball game, 78 total yards of offense for this visiting Knights team. 47 of that coming on one run from Caden Gillespie. He'll go on a double barrel shotgun look here on first and 10 from his own 44. The take to give, that's to Austin Howard, and he has stood up off the left edge as he runs into the arms of Malona Poole. A gain of, no, excuse me, a loss of a yard. Poole, nine tackles and a half a tackle for loss. 
add that one to the list as they'll drive it back to the 45-yard line and make it second and 11. Dupac will burn a timeout here with 62 seconds to play in the half. Lee Kirkland, 15 of 22 on the evening, four touchdowns. He's thrown touchdown passes to Derek Griffith, Diego Soto, Braylon Barton, and Yukari Baker. Baker catching his first collegiate pass, and it was a 10-yard touchdown for the on a fourth down conversion. Alex Sanders, nine carries for 34. Medeco, four for 11. Kirkland's been sacked once for a loss of 12. This Knights team had only been inside the red zone five times where they had scored one touchdown. They had another one there on the 47-yard run by Gillespie that took it down to the four, and they came away with nothing to show for it. So out of the timeout, make it second and 11 from the Knights, 45 on the far side hash mark. An offset pistol look for Gillespie, the take to give to Wilson, and he gets stood up and finally driven to the ground as Joe Temp will finish him off. Garon Thrower had him around the ankles. It's third down and long. Joe Temp making the final hit there. Karan Thrower made the initial contact. Upike is not going to use its final timeout here as KCU will have to snap it as they stay in the huddle until 15, they break it. Play clock is at 10, game clock at 23. And 29. Here's Wilson, dive right up the gut, pushing the pile out near midfield. He'll get the 49, and Upike burns that final time out now. Nine and a half seconds to go before halftime, a use it or lose a timeout. It'll be fourth down coming up from the Knights 49 yard line. And they're going to send the punting unit out again. And Connor Ignacio, who had his last kick blocked, he had a kick prior to that nearly blocked, had to go into a rugby style play to be able to try to get free. So 9.5 seconds remaining here in the opening half. It's been all Bears. They lead at 35 nothing. <laughs> so we'll see if the Bears try to come after Ignacio again. He'll stand back inside his own 35-yard line. Bears come after him. Ignacio hangs one high. It'll take a big bounce and tumble down inside the five, and the Knights will put it down at the one as the clock strikes zero, and we're at halftime. 35-0, U-Pike in the locker room with the lead. Halftime ceremonies and homecoming ceremonies when we continue after this on the U-Pike Sports Network. 35-0 at the half. U-Pike leading KCU. James Carter, happy to have you along with us here tonight on the U-Pike Sports Network. Homecoming for the Bears. And they're having a, uh, have a good go of it here through the first half of play. Let's look at some numbers for this one for the visiting Knights. Three first downs, 23 carries for 77 yards, 47 of that by Baden Gillespie. Uh, the longest play from scrimmage by the Knights this season. They got it down to the four-yard line but could not punch it in as they turn it over on downs, and the Knights have yet to find the scoreboard. One of seven on third down conversions, 0 of two on fourth down. They had a punt blocked for a return touchdown by Obi Wilson. For Upike, 13 first downs. They've gone through the air 30, uh, 192 times, 192 yards, excuse me, total. Four of seven on third down conversions, two of two on fourth down conversions. 
Lee Kirkland, four passing touchdowns in the first half. He's connected with Derek Griffith, Braylon Barton, Diego Soto, and Yukari Baker. So about ready to get things back underway here. Bears won the toss and took the football to start the football game. So KCU will start with the ball here to open up the second half of play. Cool evening here in Pikeville. 58 when we kicked off. Very breezy. We had some rain at the uh, beginning of the ball game as well during pregame. Now showing 54 degrees. Still uh, some bands of showers that have kind of pushed through. Looks like we'll stay dry the rest of the evening, though, until we get the ball game completed. Lee Kirkland, two passes, two touching, two passing touchdowns shy of the record of six of most touchdowns in a game. He has a part of that uh, that he got when he broke the record for most passing yards in a game a couple of weeks ago when they defeated Union 52-10 here at Hambly. So Austin Shuffler booms this one deep. Backpedaling at the eight-yard line as Morris comes right up the middle and makes it out near the 30-yard line, and that's where we'll start first down and 10 for the visiting Knights. So on the road next week are the Bears. They... Head to Blueville, Bluefield up in Virginia. Back here for Senior Day on the 28th. That's against Point, and they'll close things out on the road at St. Andrews. First down and 10. Handoff Wilson on a sweep left, and he nearly got sold in half as he came off the edge, missing the first time on the hit. Was Brent Chat or Brent Coleman, excuse me, and then Jacquez Russ finished him off for the loss as they'll drive him back to the 27 yard line. A loss of two, make it second down 12. This night's team coming in, averaging 75 a game. On the ground, they have exactly 75 here this evening on 24 attempts. Handoff Wilson tries to bounce it to the outside, and he gets hammered by Jacquez Russ off the edge. The graduate out of graduate student, I should say, out of Tarmac, Florida, third down and long. He'll get back to the original line of scrimmage on a gain of two. Third and ten. Only three first downs in the contest for the visiting Knights, who are averaging only eight a game coming in. 19% on third down tries, 20 on fourth downs coming into the ball game tonight. They're one of seven on third downs as they line this one up on a third down and 10 from their own 29-yard line. Four hats across the line, now only three as the Knights will snap it. Play action, Gillespie rolling out, Ben Tate chasing him. They'll throw it down the far sideline. He was looking for Davari Morris. Passes in complete and brings up fourth down and 10. Ben Tate applying the pressure there as Gillespie was rolling out left for the south ball. So a quick three and out. And Connor Ignacio will come out and try to boom it away. And Yukari Baker... Will stand on his own 35. Bears have already blocked one punt tonight. They returned it for a touchdown. Obi Wilson got underneath it. Karan Thrower was the man who blocked it. And Ignacio shanks this one into the sidelines. Heads up as it gets right in front of the stands here at midfield. Now the question is, where did it go out? It went out at the Knights 45-yard line. That is a 16-yard kick. So Kirkland and company will come out on the positive side of the 50. Benson and Griffith far side. 
on the wide side right. Sanders in the right pocket. Five hats across the line at four of the Knights here on first down and ten. Kirkland stands in the pocket, zips it near sideline, a low throw to Barton who hauls it in. No, they said it skipped off the turf. So make it second down, ten on the low throw there from Kirkland. Hardwick stays on the near sideline. They'll go in a three-receiver set far side. Blitz coming off the edge. Hand off to Sanders and coming in untouched. That was by Nazir Sims. So that's up third down and 10. Kirkland wants to throw, stands in the pocket, rifles it near sideline. He's got his man there of Amari Hardwick who makes the grab at the 35, move the sticks, and the 14th first down of the ball game. Kirkland last week, 19 of 34 for 243 yards and three touchdowns, did not throw an interception in the losing effort to number 24, Reinhardt. Last year carved up KCU for 209, 390 yards and four scores. He'll zip this one out near sideline to Braylon Barton, who takes it down inside the 30 to the 29. Gain of six on the play, second down four. Kentucky leads Missouri 14-0 down at Kroger Field. Kirkland pumps on this one, floats it near side. He's got his man there of Mari Hardwick in double coverage. It's off his fingertips, out of bounds. Brings up third down. And we got a pass interference call on KCU. I did not see the, the marker come out. So this will give the Bears a fresh set of downs. Their 15th first down of the ball game as it goes down inside the 15 to the 14 yard line and inside the orange zone for the Bears. Dasani Tate into the ball game. He'll start on the near side along with Sanders in an empty set. Two by three, Sanders in motion. Kirkland swings it out to Sanders and airmails it over top of his head into the far sideline. Had it set up perfectly. He had all kinds of daylight in front of him. Kirkland's pass sails high. Second down, 10, 11.30 to play in the third. Kirkland of touchdown passes tonight of 10, 23, 19, and 13. The take to give to Standers, a little nifty move in the hole as he gets across the 15 down to the 12. It's going to be third down and eight. Third down and eight near sideline, Soto and Tate. Kirkland wants to throw. Moves out near side, penalty marker comes out. He'll zip it into his man of Ben Henson for the touchdown, but that was probably coming back. Coach Corey Phipps holding his hands up at the White Hat saying, what now? I got a illegal block on Alex Sanders. It's 
So back it up now and make it third down and 27. No, excuse me. We're back at the 27. Kirkland rolling out right. Eyes down the field. Floats it near sideline. He was looking for Derek Griffith. He had a man draped all over him looking for a penalty marker. Nothing comes out. It's fourth down and long. Clock resting with 10.41 to go here in the third. The offense will stay on the field. Bears two for two on fourth down tries tonight. They've got to get it down to the five to move the sticks. Kirkland has done that little pooch punt. Let's see if he uh, takes the snap on this one, just tries to kick it out of bounds and pin KCU deep. Pressure coming off the edge, steps up in the pocket. He's going deep, got his man on the post rack, tries to come back to the ball. It was Derek Griffith in the end zone. It's incomplete. And the turnover on downs gives it back to the Knights at the 27. Good throw, but it was in double coverage. Looking for Griffith. Griffith on the night, five catches for 64 yards. Soto two for 44, Barton two for 19, Sanders four for 13. So Gillespie on the near side hash mark, three hats across the line for the Bears. The take, the give to Wilson, sweeping to the left, tries to bounce it to the outside, and he runs into a wall of orange jerseys. Jacquez Russ was there. Also, Chuck Moore, no gain on the play, second down 10. We'll cross the 10-minute mark here in the third quarter. 35-0 our score, the same mark it was at the half. Two receivers right and one left. Gillespie gives it off to Wilson, and he gets tripped up in the hole. That was Ben Tate that got him around the ankles. A gain of two. It's third down and eight. Again, KCU one of eight tonight on third down conversion tries. KCU is really trying to take the air out of the football, not allowing U-Pike to get the football back and try to go quickly. Zips it out near side. Braden Long makes the grab, lost the football, and the Bears have the football. Forcing the fumble and getting the recovery was Jacquez Russ. He'll take it inside the 30 and a short field coming up for the Bears after the turnover on the fumble. So Russ with a big pop and then the ball squirted out and kicked off the turf right to where he was lying on the field. And all he had to do was scoop it up and get the football back for the, the Bears who will have it at their own 27. Or excuse me, at the Knights 27. Griffith Barton and Soto wide right. Stafford left. We'll take it out to Stafford, cutting across the far side now to the 20, chased out of bounds, stepping out at the 15. Move the sticks under the Bears' first down, number 16 of the ball game. From this spot, they typically have tried to find Derek Griffith on that post route. They're going to put him on the boundary side. They'll take, give it off to Sanders. Sanders spins, goes up the middle. Got spun off his feet by Cozy Okafor. Shy of the 10, down to the 11.
Three games remaining for U Pike. Two of those on the road. Bluefield next week. Back here for Senior Day on the 28th against Point. And they'll close things out at St. Andrews. Kirkland pumps, rifles, going back corner, and nobody there. Closest man in the area was DeAndre Stafford. He missed his man on the post as Barton cut inside and got the free release. But the pump move by Kirkland had already taken it to the back corner of the end zone on the flag route. Third down and six on the incompletion. Blitz coming off the edge, picked up, and a ball picked off in the end zone. Straight into the hands of Javid Gale. So the touchback will give the Knights the football out at the 20. But Javid Gale gets his first interception of the season as Kirkland let go of that one, and it was well over the head of his intended receiver. So 7.59 to play here in the third quarter. Still 35-0, our score at the half, but Kirkland firing interception number three on the season. And the Knights will take over on their own 20. Double barrel look this time with Gillespie as he's got Wilson and Howard flanking him right and left. He'll stick it in the shoulder pads of Wilson. He'll spin off the near side edge after getting across the 20. Initial contact there was by Frank Baker, the senior out of Culver City, California. He'll take him out to the three, or the 23 on a gain of three, second and seven. KCU sits about midway through the second quarter. Wait until about 15 seconds on the play clock before they break the huddle. And they've been milking it all the way down to about one second on that clock before they snap it. They'll snap it at five on this one. Another give to Wilson right up the gut, and he spins into the arms of Malone Pule. He'll cross the 25 to the 26, a gain of three. Make it third down four. Seven minutes to play third quarter. Knights one of nine on third down conversions tonight. As a bouquet sprints off as they'll bring in Davari Morris. Play clock's at five as Gillespie steps up, calls forward at two. Play action. Rifles it across the middle. He's got his man there of Davari Morris. He gets hammered from behind as Tierden Barry made the hit, but the play goes out to the 41-yard line and moves the sticks for the fourth first down of the ballgame for the Knights. Gillespie fired a rocket, and Davari Morris... Hauls in only the third completed pass of the night. Gillespie now three for seven. Three-man rush. Gives that one off to Austin Howard and a lead tackle there by Levi Evans. No gain on the play, second down, 10. Second down. Okay. 
Gillespie on second down. Another give to Wilson, trying to stretch it out to the near sideline and gets pushed out of bounds into the Bears bench by Karan Thrower. Missouri has taken a 17-14 lead on Kentucky down at Kroger Field. 17-14 Missouri. Missouri has put up 17 in the second quarter on the Cats. High snap, Gillespie rolling out, being chased. He'll fire it low. It's picked off the shoelaces there by Davari Morris. And he'll move the sticks as they cross the midfield stripe and get it down to the 45. Frank Baker was in pursuit of Gillespie. Pitt has just taken the lead over Louisville, 24-21, 3.39 to go in the third out in Pitt. I said this game with Louisville was the biggest trap game of the season for them. Coming off the win over Notre Dame last week at home and then playing a one and four pit team. Here's Wilson, finds a hole in the middle and initial contact there by Levi Evans. Also in there was Chuck Moore down to the 41 yard line. Gain of four, second and six. Major League Baseball postseason getting underway today as Texas Rangers and the Houston Astros scheduled to get going at 8.15 tonight. have not seen a start of the game. Oh, excuse me, that's tomorrow night. My mistake. Wilson, immediate contact after the handoff there by Russ. No gain on the play, third and six. National League Championship Series starts on Monday. D-backs will play game one at Philadelphia. Have the second game of the National or the American League Championship Series playing in Houston. Thirty-five nothing here. It's been the same score since halftime. We've got two minutes to go in the period. Good sustained drive here by KCU Gillespie. Play action. Rolling out. Ben Tate chasing. Flings it high and it's knocked down. Broken up on the far sideline. That's by Brett Coleman, the sophomore from Belfry. Good play out in the open field. Makes it fourth down. So Coleman gets in there and swats it down with the left hand. The clock resting with 146 to go in the frame. And did we get a penalty marker? So an ineligible man downfield. So they decline the, the penalty, take the result of the play, so it's fourth down and six. Tenth play of the drive coming up here, an eight-minute drive. KCU tonight 0 for 2 on fourth down conversions. Four hats across the line. They send five. Gillespie trying to read the edge, and he's not going to get there. Trayvon Barnett chased him to his bench, and the turnover on downs will give the football back to 
Upike with 69 seconds, or to me, 96 seconds to play. Let's see where they'll put the football. They'll have it at their own 41 yard line. So a new quarterback in the ball game, Xavier Malone. Junior out of Knoxville, Tennessee, will take his first snap of the night. Wants to throw on first down, throws it across the middle, has his man there of Hardwick. As he'll pick up a couple. Give him a gain of two on the play, second down, eight. We'll go inside of a minute on this snap here by Malone. Rifles it out to the far sideline, has his man there. That's out to Derek Griffith right at midfield. Griffith, sixth catch of the night. So third down and one. Man, they got to blow that one dead as coming off the edge, unabated to the quarterback there, trying to jump the, uh, the snap count. Was Jacob Wright. And then the result of the play is going to give the Bears a first down, their 17th of the ball game. Grant Scott checking into the ball game, his first action tonight. He'll go in the slot on the far sideline. Adrian Medeco in the left pocket of Maloney wants to throw on first down. They pick up the blitz. He rifles a bullet across the middle to Diego Soto, having it at the 30. He'll backpedal and go to the 32, but the result of the play will be another first down for the Bears with 21 seconds to go in the third. Still the same score that we had back at the halftime pause and see if they can get one more away before the end of the period. A player came across, no flag seen yet, and a ball into the back of the end zone as the clock hits zeros as DeAndre Stafford runs under it for the six. Touchdown, Bears. Beautiful ball there from Xavier Malone for his third passing touchdown of the season. He had two men in the same area, and Stafford just reaches up and holds it into the bread basket. So Stafford's fifth touchdown of the season. Extra point is good. 42 to nothing as we go to fourth quarter action after this on the UPOC Sports Network. We head to the fourth and final quarter, and Upike punches it in for another touchdown. Xavier Malone connects with DeAndre Stafford from 32 yards out, and a four-play 59-yard drive, one minute and 39 seconds 
as they hit the home run ball in the near side corner closest to the field house as the clock struck zero. So the lone points of the frame coming there to end the quarter. 42-0 is our score with a kickoff coming here to start the fourth and final stanza. Lee Kirkland's night ends at 18 for 31. Four touchdowns, an interception, 186 yards. Five passing touchdowns on the night for U Pike. A driving kick takes a bounce at the four and goes into the end zone. So a touchback, and the Knights come out trailing 42 0. Stay tuned with us after the game for post-game coverage. Check over the scoring and stats of this one. We'll talk with head coach Corey Phipps. They'll be on the road next week to Bluefield. Back here in two weeks for senior day against Point. And they'll close the season for the regular season action, that is, against St. Andrews. New tailback in the backfield for KCU is Marcus Ross. Gillespie takes, gives it off to Wilson. Wilson with a head of steam, and he'll push out near the 30-yard line. Looks like they're going to put him down at the 29. Penalty marker on the far sideline. Typically, that's an infraction of an illegal motion or an illegal shift or something. We'll see with our white hat and see what we've got here. And we get another illegal substitution. So five yards back, and we'll repeat first down. So first down and 15 of the Knights go behind the sticks. College football action, top 25 action. Pitt has taken a 10-point lead over number 14, Louisville, 31-21 after three. Missouri leads number 24, Kentucky, 17-14 at the half. 42-0 our score here at Hambly. You're on homecoming night for the Bears. First down and 15 for Gillespie as he claps the hands, gives this one off to the tailback of Ross. He'll try to find a seam right up the gut and fall forward for maybe a couple. They'll take him out to the 22-yard line. Make it second down and 13. Number 21, Notre Dame, leads 10th rated USC 24 to 6. A lot of crazy games today on the teams not ranked in the top five of college football. One, two, three, and four all rolled to convincing wins. Handoff Wilson, sweep right. Sticks a foot in the turf, tries to come back to the near sideline and gets caught from behind. I would tell you who he is, but he's not on the roster. <laughs> Coach Phipps just got recorded for a tackle. I figured we would get a head spin and look toward the press box on that one. Here's Ross. He gets suplexed backward on a big hit there in the hole. And a penalty marker flies on the end. And that looks like it's going to be against KCU as the Bears stand up and immediately start to clap as they walk away from the pile. All of a sudden, this game has turned into a jar of molasses in the wintertime in Alaska. Of 
We got that one on Austin Richards, left guard. Brandon Johnson is number 33. I like Corey Phipps better. So make it fourth down and forever. Ignacio will punt from his own end zone. Baker stands at midfield. Ignacio launches one. He got a good one this time, an end over end kick that will take a Bears bounce after hitting the turf at the 46 and coming back across the 45 to the 42. Xavier Malone back on the field with Adrian Medeco. Stafford and Soto far side, Baker near side. Grant Scott is an attached tight end on that left edge. The take to give to Medeco, a stutter step into the hole, and then the rugby scrum pushes it across the 40. Down to the 38-yard line, a gain of four, second down six. Still waiting for a ball to get down inside the one and get the tush push, as they're calling it now, where everybody just gets behind whoever has the ball and starts driving them into the end zone. Inside of 12 to go in the contest. All you pike in this when they lead at 42 nothing. Five hats across the line for the Knights. Malone airing it out, coming to Baker near sideline and overthrows him. Passes incomplete, third and six. Clock stopped at 11.34 to go. Here in the fourth and final stanza. Malone wants to throw. Airing it out. Has a man in stride at the goal line who reaches up, holds it in, and gets the touchdown. As that is DeAndre Stafford who holds in his second touchdown of the night. But we've got a penalty marker back on the field at the 42. And they'll get a hold on... U Pike. As they'll get that one on Franklin Randall. So back it up and take the points off the board. So it moves it all the way back to the 48-yard line. They got to get the down and distance markers reset. So, yeah, third and 16 now. Bears on the night, 5 of 11 on third down conversions. Malone. Pressure coming. Stands in the pocket, eyes down the middle of the field, rifles it out. He's got his man there of Grant Scott who makes the catch and then gets taken off his feet down at the 30. That'll move the sticks for the 20th first down of the ball game for the Bears tonight. Malone puts a man in motion on first down and 10. Pressure coming off the edge. Now he slips free off the left side, being chased from behind, and finally gets pounded to the ground. Making the stop is Clifford G.
Free play here for Malone, who gets hammered as he turns loose of the ball. It was intended for Dasani Tate, but a free play on the infraction from the far sideline for the offsides against KCU. So make it second down nine now. Two receivers each way for Malone. Wants to throw. Hit as he lets it fly, looking for Scott, and he throws it right into the man playing center field, the high safety for the Knights. It's going to haul in their second interception for Javid Gale. Two picks for him tonight. As the defensive back there just playing uh, basically goal line coverage, and that one hits him right in the hands for an easy pick, his second of the evening. So Malone throws his second interception of the season. 10.06 to go in the ball game. The Bears in full control of this one. Football is at the three-yard line. Let's see if the Bears pin their ears back and try to go after this one. Gillespie. Standing in his end zone, gives it off to Wilson. He'll go right up the gut, runs into the hands of Brandon Johnson. Also in there was Pule. Inside of 10 to go. Good night offensively for the Bears. 297 yards, 258 through the air. KCU tonight, 46 snaps, 129 total. Averaging 135 on the year. Wilson in the left pocket of Gillespie. He'll give it off to Wilson, and he spins into the hole, and the orange jersey of Brandon Johnson again waiting on him. Wilson and Johnson sounds like a law firm. Across the nine-minute mark to go here in the ball game here in this homecoming 2023 for the Bears. They've been in full control of this one from the word go. 21 points in the first quarter, 14 in the second, seven in the third as they hit a touchdown as time expired. Gillespie rolling out on this play. Zips it out to his man who makes a juggling catch. Javante Anderson. It's going to be fourth down. So this will be the seventh punt of the night coming up. And Connor Ignacio will stand just inside that end line. Baker dying to get a chance to return one. He'll stand inside the 40. Ignacio hits this one to the far sideline. It takes a bounce sideways and tumbles into the Knights bench at the 40-yard line. We've got two flags on the field one at the 21, one at the 25. They're going to put them both at the 25 as we also go to night player down. Eight fifteen to play in the ball game. Player down is Anthony Hall, the long snapper who had gone downfield. So an injury timeout, back after this on the Pike Sports Network.
8.15 to go in the ball game. Athletic training staff still attending to the downed player of Anthony Hall, the long snapper for the Knights. Let's take you through the scoring summary of this one. Casey, you put three touchdowns in the end zone in the first quarter. Lee Kirkland, three passing touchdowns. You carry Baker, caught the first one for 10 yards out. Derek Griff with a 23-yarder. Diego Soto, a 19-yarder. 21-0 after one. Kirkland goes back to work. 13 yards to Braylon Barton in the second. 28 to nothing. The defense gets in on the scoring as a Connor Ignacio punt is blocked by Karan Thrower. Obi Wilson scoops it up and goes 30 yards to the house. 35 nothing at the half. And then to end the third quarter, Xavier Malone hooks up with DeAndre Stafford. And that makes it 42 to nothing. And that's where we currently stand here as the medical training staff here attends to the downed player. So we have an injury timeout. We'll send it back to another break. We're back after this on the UPAC Sports Network.
8.15 left to go here in the ball game as the medical staff continues to tend to Anthony Hall, the long snapper for the Knights. And we certainly send our best wishes and speedy healing process to that young man and a, uh, all the Knights players coming off the sideline, several players from the Bears coming over to kind of assist and, and stay ten or kind of kind of build a wall around as they loaded him up in the medical cart as well. Hello, sir. Hello. I felt sorry for you down here talking to yourself. No, that's okay. I've been talking to myself all night. I, I do it I do it a lot, so um I've I kind of kind of gotten all the way home. <laughs> but that doesn't last three hours. Yeah, so uh Again, it's uh, it's been a good night for the night or the Bears here this evening. Uh, Forty-two nothing. They run out quickly. Thirty-five nothing at halftime, and it's kind of you. You see, this was a game that I talked with Coach Phipps before the game. It's a game that kind of a get well game after a tough loss on the road last week. Yeah, exactly, and you know it was interesting that when I talked to uh, Corey on the coach's show this week, he said that there were only about three guys still there who he was even acquainted with, and he didn't coach them. They were recruits. Which is unusual. You know, he's been gone from there too long. Yeah, three years. So, back underway we go as we'll get a new quarterback out for the Bears as he slings it out to the near sideline. Gets it into the hands of Xavier Malone as Garrison Barnett, freshman of Church Hill, Tennessee. It's right outside of Kingsport. Okay. Another handoff to the new tailback in there as Galloway breaks free down the far sideline and gets tackled inside the five. I think I can put the spotting board up and go to the roster. I, I'm just saying that <laughs> we're that far down the depth chart at this point, so, which is a good thing. Yes. I mean, when you're up 42 to nothing. Galloway, a – Young man out of Elizabethtown. He'll start in the left pocket. They'll see if they feed him again. They do. He'll run it right. Barrel into the end zone. He's in for six. As Gary Galloway, the junior out of E-Town, gets his first collegiate touchdown. And the Bears add to the lead. It's 48-0. Again, you get into a situation like this in a game that's been well under control for quite some time, and you get guys that don't get a lot of playing time and they go right down the field and march it in and put it in for six. That's a big opportunity. Well, yeah, they don't they don't get to play very often, so you know it's it's good that it, there aren't starters out there. But you got to make a play and make them stop, you know. And you know, you go back to the first touchdown of the ball game. Yukari Baker catches his first collegiate pass, and it's a touchdown on fourth down, to say the least. Extra point drives through the uprights and makes it forty nine nothing. Seven fourteen to go. You look at the schedule upcoming for the Bears. Three games, two of them on the road. they got to go to Bluefield next week, back here for point with senior day, and then at St. Andrews, three winnable games moving forward on the rest of the season. I think next week will determine whether the Bears finish with three losses or four because I, I think that's the last one that should be a, a really competitive game. I think point is a beatable team. St. Andrews is down. so They yes. lost big today to Reinhardt, 57-0. Yeah. I'm not sure. I'm not sure they've won this year, so I, I could be wrong about that. So I, I think next week is the big one for this uh, for this football team. Bluefield is a very tough place to play. You're kind of cut in the side of a mountain, and the, you it just seems to me like when, every time when you get there, there's just so little energy in the stadium. Well, you're playing in a 10,000 seat place. I once saw an all day concert there that. You know, it was it was great, but it's just it's not conducive to football, and it's also the place that they all play football. Like yes. there's like four or five high schools over there, and Bluefield they all play in that same place. They start playing on Thursday night, go all the way through Saturday night, out there most weeks, getting those games in. So uh, it's it's an interesting place to play. There's no question about it. We played them over there their first game after they resumed their program, and they it had been shut down for probably 70 years or so we played them their first game over there and you know even at that there wasn't a lot of people there to watch I, that game I'm, I'm forgetting the coach's last name i remember his first name's dewey i want to say dewey lusk 
I it, think you're right. I believe it. And he's been there forever. Coach Phipps and he have a really good relationship. And I remember uh, – Bluefield came down to KCU when when Coach Phipps was still there in Grayson, and KCU beat up on them pretty good. And then we go to Bluefield because they had a, a team that canceled. It was the year that Cincinnati Christian shut their program down. They didn't have a home. They didn't have a uh, a game for senior night. So KCU goes to Bluefield. We get up there. It's a cold, windy, rainy night. Just there's nobody there, and I mean it was like just crickets. And played absolutely god awful. Yeah, it's a it's a tough place. There's no question about it. Bears gonna have to step up next week. There's no question about it. That'll be a real challenge for them. But I'll tell you what, after the way they played at Reinhardt, Bluefield's not Reinhardt. They're good. They're not Reinhardt. And the Bears should have won that game. Could have won that. And game here's for the sure. thing too that you're you're thinking of as you go down the stretch here, four consecutive wins to close out the season, and you're you're also looking at one of those at-large burst that comes out of the AAC this year that's not been something that you've had before in the Mid-South Conference? Right now, the guarantee is you've got to be in the top 20. And there's 20 teams getting in. It's kind of weird the way they do it. So we'll have to see how it goes. But right now, the Bears aren't getting votes. They have three losses. But, you know, what, what we know and they don't pay attention to is all three of those losses have been the top 25 teams. Yes. So... The Bears are playing well. And, you know, that was something Coach Phipps and I, we talked about after they took that second loss, and he was talking to one of his former coach, or coaching friends, and he said, he said, look, man, he said, I know you're down on yourself because you felt like, you know, you're two and two, but look at who your two losses are. Yeah, exactly. Hand off to Howard as he'll try to bounce it to the outside, and he gets driven out of bounds into the Bears bench. They're, they're actually – I like this by the linesman over here. Saying that he oh, stayed he, in bounds. He stays in bounds. Yeah, yeah. That, there's no chance that he went out of bounds. Yeah. So six minutes left to go in the ball game. Third down and seven coming up for the Knights. And I doubt there's one person on that KCU sideline complaining about that. No, not a chance. Uh, you're you know you're on the road over two hours from home. A cold, cold, windy night that as we started off had rain before the game started. It's uh, you know fall. You can really tell it is here. As this past week we've. We've seen over the last, I guess, about 10 days outside of the last couple, yeah. some really cool nights, and you can see the colors changing in the foliage of the, of the leaves as well. So here's a handoff as trying to bounce it to the outside is William Bowen, his first carry here tonight. I'll tell you, it's really going to be fall weather this coming week. Yes. It's going to get a lot cooler. It, it's starting to feel like football season. Yeah. You know, we've stayed so mild through the the all of September and, a, and the first part of October. You know, we got into 1st of October, and we were looking at 87, 88, 89 degrees. Hey, we wore shorts to work yesterday. Yeah. You know, I, I got to the to the field last night up at Raceland, and I was in shorts and sandals because, yeah. I mean, it was warm now. But when the when the sun went away, it got nice. But it was it was a warm afternoon yesterday. It's been a great week on campus, a lot of homecoming activities. And a few alums coming back. It's good to see them. And you look back and you see, you know, we had a really good crowd here tonight as uh, a lot of times you'll get families that make the trip. This may be sure. the only time this season that they come in town and so forth to, to see the, the kids in homecoming. And now we get a little bit of extracurriculars on the other well, side. I think we got a guy down there trying to push um, our return man into the ball so they could fall on it. And they, uh, somebody needs to grab a hold of Diego Soto and yeah. get him off the field. You need, he got you tired do, of being pushed around. I was going to say, you do not need anything to happen. To He's just healthy and coming back and is a big part of this offense. You don't need to do something to where he gets himself disqualified next week. So, Chase Mims. There we go. He'll take his first snap as a college athlete. Played his high school career at Betsy Lane. I covered him a couple of times. Uh, a really solid-looking young man, 6'4", 230-pound freshman. He can sling it all over the field. He wants to throw it on first down. Looks near side, going for a home run ball, coming to the near side. Got what it. a catch! Right in front of the Bears bench as Noah Ford, the freshman out of Santa Rosa Beach, Florida, hauls it in. Welcome to college football, Mr. Mims. He'll take it down to the 39-yard line. And right there is what I was talking about. That young kid, he can sling it all yes, over the field can. anywhere he wants to. He sure can. He was he... a nice basketball player, basically, too. 
did not get to see him play basketball, but I did see him play football. And I mean, he was he was ruthless. He had no fear. He would throw it in the tightest windows. He stands in the pocket here, brings it on across the middle, and that's into the hands of Keyshawn Crossley, tied in out of Sumter, South Carolina. Second down. I'll tell you, having been around since the the start of this program. There's been a lot of Sumter, South Carolina on our roster. We have done well out of that little town. Good little pipeline right there. And we've got offsides or false start. Like, which one? It was a little that bit That looked like everybody moved except <laughs> the center. The center. <laughs> he didn't snap the ball. My favorite one, though, is, is the game when the center stood up with the football and nobody else moved. <laughs> and the Bears are moving backwards, so... They're going to get a false start against them. So, crazy day of football in college, top 25. The top four teams cruising, but uh, you've got all kinds of disparity rolling around the, the other teams, the top 25. Several teams already losing today. Louisville's on the ropes right now, down 10 at Pitt, a 1-4 and four Pitt team. As here's a little dump down that goes out to... Mr. Galloway, and he'll get down to the 30-yard line. It'll be just short of the distance to gain. Kentucky's trailing I think, Missouri. I think he's sending a message to his coaches, yeah. don't you? He's like, I need some playing time, That's coach. Right. I know you got an All-American out back here in the backfield, but look at me. Showing he can do a little bit of the running and the, uh, the catching in the screen game. Hand off Galloway, met at the point of contact, and he's you, immediately hit and dropped You made the a ground. good point there. If you're going to be a running back on this team, you better be able to catch it. Oh, you, you're an extended running back as a wide receiver, I and mean, that's, your, that's your job. You know, you look at so much of what Alex Sanders has done here in his career, he's like a fifth wide yeah. receiver that lines up sometimes in the slot, a lot of times in the backfield, and sometimes will put him in motion and run him both places. Fourth down and two for Mims. Oh. That's a, he gets a free play here. Did they throw the penalty? They do. He's going to throw the home run ball down the far sideline into the end zone. It's knocked away. He was looking down that far side corner for Connor Goodman. I know that young man oh, out yeah. of East Carter High School up in my hometown of Grayson. Had him in class last year. Great young man. Good football player, basketball player. Saw his dad. His dad comes in for every game here and would have been a big one for him to get an opportunity. I pointed him out to our interim AD in the cafeteria the other day. I said, see that young man? He said, yeah. I said, he's a football player. He said, get out of here. I said, no, no. He said, what position? I said, he's a receiver. And he just doesn't look like it. Yeah. But, you know, we had a young man here named Jordan Amos, and I used to say situations like that, that he was a little inconspicuous guy. Nobody knew who he was all week, but on Saturday everybody in town knew who he was. Mims fires this one out to the far sideline. He's got his man there as T.J. Sanders, freshman out of Thomasville, Georgia, hauls it in, Another but a penalty line. marker on the far sideline. I think there's no question about it. This will be the record for most flags on the Bears. Tell you what, this officiating crew, they're going to have to go home and put some icy hot on yes, the shoulders. They, they have tossed the hankies around tonight. That is the 19th, I believe that'll be the 20th accepted penalty in this ball game. 12 on KCU, eight on U-Pike. That's one thing that I think this team's done pretty well too. Not been a lot of penalties this year, but tonight there's been a couple of reasons for that in my estimation. Mims tries a check down on a crosser there, was looking for Sanders. You know, you look at this team, seven penalties for 66 yards was the average coming into the game. and. It's not been those those big ones, the 15 yarders. And you think about of the 75 yards that they had uh, had accepted penalties against them, three of those were 15 yarders for unsportsmanlike conduct penalties. One of those on Coach Phipps. And and I'll be honest <laughs> with you, that Coach Phipps earned that one. He Absolutely. Was, I, I was I was right in his pocket there with that one. I'm with him. We'll try to come near sideline and airmail it out of bounds. That was toward Noah Ford. Brings it up third down. Third and 15, 92 seconds left to go in the contest. Upike's going to go to four and three on the year. 
So the guy that this field's named after, Hillard Howard, longtime high school, legendary high school football coach, used to tell me all the time, Bentley, there's only three things can happen when you throw the ball and two of, two them, are of them are bad. So he well, liked I, to run I, it. A coach that I, I coached baseball with up at Raceland, he was also a longtime football coach there at Raceland, Randy Vanderhoof, and that's oh, yeah. what he always used to say, two bad things can happen when you throw the football. Oh. And Mims gets buried. That's ball comes out. Fumble. As Uriel, Uriel Carrero drops it, and the turnover will give the football back to KCU with a minute 24 left to play. It's three turnovers tonight, which I'm sure Coach Phipps won't be happy with. That's four. Four turnovers. Yeah. Two, two fumbles, two interceptions. Yeah. And again, Mims tried to stand in the pocket there and, and was going to deliver the blow and, and take the big pop, and he just got hit by a bigger pop there by Curiel. So last chance for the Knights, who have mustered only two touchdowns this season, as he'll hand it off on the Ross run around the edge. I'm going to go shut the door. Yeah. 46. Carrier. So, a minute left here. I'll tell you, you I, I'll be honest with you, I admire this KCU team. Like you say, they've scored 12 points all year. And, you know, it, you can imagine by this point in the season what it's like and coming up here, playing in the cold and dark. And, yeah, 0-6. Now yeah. you're about to go to 0-7. Jason Aubrey, his first year there in Grayson and just trying to build things from scratch. I mean, it's, you know, they've had a lot of defects that have, that have transferred out, several from – KCU came to Upike when Coach Phipps came down here, and then Jake Dix or Jake uh, Russell, excuse me, leaves and goes to Campbellsville late. And I think there were 27 transfers went to Campbellsville with him, and that really took a big, big, a number of players out. And you look across the way, it doesn't look like a college football team standing on the far no, sideline because of doesn't. the numbers. It doesn't. It really doesn't. And. But I think they'll, I think they've got the opportunity to, uh, and to I agree build it that. the way he wants. I hope he'll stick around and, and give it a chance. And I, I'm really concerned about the state of that program, and I know it's a program near and dear to your heart, and and as well it should be. And um, I know I have a lot of friends up there. Uh, my buddy Tim Carper, uh, you know, who was the voice of of uh, KCU for a long time, and. I, this program, it's not my program, but it means something to me because I know what it means to my friends like you guys. And, and, and the thing is that KCU means a lot to Grayson. Sure it, it, it has been, I mean, I can, as a kid growing up there, KCU was always there. It was KCC at the time. Yeah, right. Um, and before they went from the college to the university. But uh, certainly hope, uh, hoping that uh, they can continue to try to build the program and get it back to where Coach Phipps had really built it up before leaving to come to U-Pike and, uh, and taking over here. Before I jump off here, I want to mention to you that uh, it was a KCU coach. I shook his hand on the sideline one day, and I said, uh, Coach, I want, I want to come over and say hello to you. You're the first person I ever shook hands with who I had on my fantasy football team. <laughs> And <laughs> Mike Furry. And he laughed at me. Good and he friend said, of mine. And he, he looked, at, looked at me and he said, well, I appreciate that, but you need to shake hands with that guy because he's wearing a Super Bowl ring. And the guy literally had it on that day here. I was like, first of all, I thought, why would you wear a Super Bowl ring to Pikeville, Kentucky? But uh, Sometimes, you, you know, you got a Super Bowl ring, you have that option. I guess. I guess. Yeah, if Mike, you got one, you wear it. That's right. Mike Furry, he was one of the uh, the all-time good, uh, one of the top coaches there, KCU. He and yep. Coach Corey Phipps are – ones that have uh, put winning records in their resumes there. But, uh, Rick, thanks for jumping on with you me. Bet. I greatly appreciate it. You bet. I appreciate you, and we'll see you in two weeks. 49 nothing. our score.